It was a rainy day in London, and Phileas Fogg, an ingenious, quick-witted man, was at the Reform Club having tea with his friends when he boasted about the possibility of traveling around the world in just eighty days. One of his richest friends was doubtful and proposed a wager. He would give Fogg ten thousand pounds if he actually could travel around the world in eighty days. Wasting no time, Fogg started his journey the very next day with his best friend and assistant, Passepartout. Passepartout was very faithful to Fogg, but was very silly and careless. In their hot air balloon, the two friends headed towards their first destination, Paris. When they reached Paris, they were greeted by the beautiful Eiffel Tower. Fogg wanted to take a better look, and so they brought their hot air balloon closer. Suddenly, the balloon got stuck on the tower. They called for help, and a rescue team arrived. Using a very, very long ladder, both Fogg and Passepartout were saved. Getting rescued from the tower took longer than it should have, and Fogg and Passepartout were behind by half a day. They thanked the rescue team very much and immediately boarded a grand ocean liner for their next destination, Egypt. <laughs> The ship arrived in Egypt, and as they traveled across the land, they came upon the famous statue of the Sphinx and the great pyramids of Giza. Passepartout wanted to go inside one of the pyramids to see if they could find any mummies, but Fogg was in a hurry. Nevertheless, Fogg agreed, and they both went inside. Inside the pyramid, it was silent and very murky. Fogg and Passepartout came across large golden coffins called sarcophaguses. Curious and trembling with fear, Passepartout opened a sarcophagus and found a dead body wrapped in bandages, a mummy. He opened the next sarcophagus and shivered when he found another mummy. Fogg mocked Passepartout for being such a scary cat and opened the third sarcophagus himself. No sooner did Fogg open the third coffin than a snarling, slimy, very much alive mummy sprang out at them. They screamed and ran out of the pyramid. Another half a day had passed. Fogg and Passepartout continued to make their way around the world, and their next stop was far away India. They reached Bombay and saw the famous India Gate. The streets were bustling with people and cars. In fact, there was so much going on that they could barely walk. Fogg had read a lot about the famous Indian cities of Delhi. Agra and Calcutta, and was keen on visiting them. They boarded a train and marveled at the beauty of India. They even saw one of the new seven wonders of the world, the Taj Mahal. A man sitting next to them on the train told them about India's famous jungles, and so they decided they had time to go on a jungle safari the next day. While they were enjoying the jungle, a beautiful girl ran by. She was being chased by bandits. Fog and Passepartout fought them off and rescued her. The girl thanked them. She told them that her name was Aouda and that she had no family and was very lonely. Fog invited her to join them in their race around the world. Aouda agreed. And the three headed towards China on sturdy yaks. As they crossed the mighty Himalaya mountains, Fog and Aouda fell in love. They knew they had arrived at their destination when they saw the Great Wall of China looming before them. 
Aouda was amazed to see such an enormous wall spanning the countryside. They walked along the fantastic wall and soon came upon a festival of sorts. There was lots of food and people were dancing and singing traditional Chinese songs. Fog, Aouda and Passepartout could not help but join in the celebrations. Their next destination was America. Once again, they boarded a ship. The blue sea, the Chinese dancers, and the lofty Himalayas were like a dream for Aouda. They landed on Ellis Island in the city of New York. The first thing they saw was the enormous green Statue of Liberty. They started across the continent and soon met two brothers who called themselves the Wright Brothers. The Wright Brothers were busy designing a huge bird machine that could fly. If they succeeded, people would be able to travel long distances in a short amount of time. Fogg told the Wright Brothers about his bet to travel around the world in 80 days and how they were running out of time. They needed to reach England the very next day. The Wright brothers decided to lend them their flying machine. Could their plane make it all the way across the Atlantic Ocean? The three travelers were going to find out. They reached England in record time and made their way to the Reform Club, but found that the inn was empty. Fogg was disheartened. It was evening, and they were supposed to reach the inn by the afternoon. Fogg had lost the wager. Passepartout picked up a newspaper lying on a nearby table and suddenly gave a yell. He laughed and showed Fogg and Aouda the date. They'd actually arrived a day ahead of schedule. Fogg had won the bet. Fogg's rich friend met him the next day with a laugh and gave him his well-earned 10,000 pounds. Fogg turned to Aouda and asked her if she would consent to be his bride. Aouda accepted, and they had a grand wedding attended by their closest friends. Meanwhile, Passepartout was planning their next journey.